Hello everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Kyle and you're watching Successful Archie Student. Thanks for joining me today. I want to share with you my third year project. This is my first semester project. I just finished maybe a week ago. So recently, a lot of people have been asking me, they're like, how can you always post other students work on your page? And we've never seen your work. And I'm like, that's a good point. I don't really share too much of my work. And so today I wanted to share with you the project I just worked on. A lot of people have been asking me to share this specific project. This is my design studio five final project for semester one. If you guys haven't seen me present the first part of this project, I do that in the video. I'm gonna put the link uh, up there so you can go watch me presenting my previous submission. Now this submission was a bit different because pretty much all they were asking for was a full documentation set. And for those of you that don't know what a documentation set is, it's a full drawing set with all plans, sections, elevations, details, just showing how the building is constructed. Rather than this being kind of like a sketch design where we have to create a concept and everything, it's really focusing more on the technical side of things and the construction behind it. And I think this semester was quite cool because the first part of the semester the, the first project, which was worth 40% of the grade, it was a project to come up with the design ourselves and to create a brief for ourselves and to work with the people who actually own this, this site for an outdoor education center and to come up with a sheltered space. The design isn't actually a building per se, it's more a shelter, more a canopy kind of structure uh, made out of timber. All in all, I thought it was a really cool semester because yeah, we started off creating this design for ourselves, but then actually to document that and start detailing it ourselves. In the previous submissions, all we've really been doing is coming up with a concept, creating a sketch design proposal for this design, and then it kind of just stops there. However, to force ourselves to quickly come up with a design concept and, you know, a sketch design in that first submission within the first six weeks of the semester, and then to quickly move on to start detailing and documenting the process of how it would actually be built. It just really felt like a real project where we had a real client and we had a deadline to come up with a full documentation set, which which is kind of what you would be doing in the real life. So the final submission had three parts to it. First of all, we had to do the full documentation set, um, which they were either wanting hand drawn, which I was like, no way, no way. <laughs> I had to do that in first year and it took way too long. Or they uh, said to do it on Revit, which is the approach I took. Or they said you could use any other documentation software you want. So that could have been ArchiCAD or yeah, Revit, as I said, AutoCAD. And the reason for me choosing Revit is because it's this all-in-one package. It's great for Windows um, and it's kind of what I'm most familiar with at the moment. And whereas we haven't gotten the grades back for this submission yet because we only had it in last week, um, I will probably make another video on my reaction to that grade. So um, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that video. But once again, I honestly don't really care what my grade is because I just feel like I learned so much from this project because it really did just feel like a real project and it, yeah, it really got me that experience in Revit, which I wasn't too uh, comfortable with earlier. And yeah, as I said, it was just really cool being able to start from, you know, a sketch design to a complete documentation set. So we had a full documentation set as the first part. The second part is an A3 folio showing kind of the whole process of how we got the design and to show all the manufacturing data and any other data that we couldn't include in the documentation set. The third part of the submission was to create a video walkthrough of the design uh, in Revit. I used Enscape to create a small little video for it using my video editing skills and again I thought outside the box and decided to do something a bit different than just a walkthrough in Revit. So first things first, I think I'm going to show you the video because it's kind of the easiest way to understand what my design is. And then after that we'll move into the folio because it kind of shows my whole process behind my design and I can walk you through what some of my decisions were for designing it the way I did. And then lastly, we can have a look at the actual documentation set and I can explain some of the things I've done there. So if I open up my computer here, I've got my final video. So let's have a look at my video. My design was called Remember because it's um, kind of accentuating this idea of the fireplace. And that's why in the background you can hear, you know, the camp sounds and um, what it would be like to actually sense this space. And although none of the materials are added to the um, design, they didn't ask for that, they just wanted to walk through. Um, you can kind of get a feel of what it would feel like being in the space by having that sound in there. So here is a little kitchen space um, to serve maybe 100 people at most. This is the fireplace and it's kind of accentuating that idea of coming together and um, the flame and smoke rising. So here is the kitchen space, you've got the barbecue, 
and then down below you've got all these seats and um, you can actually get up on the roof as well. The trees stick out through this little blanket. The whole idea is to have a grid shell structure so you've got um, timber lades that span the entire way around and um, kind of cross over and crisscross like a grid shell. And that is the video for Remember. So moving on, we have the folio for Remember. And this was kind of like my little logo I had because in the first submission, I had a little flame going in my video. Um, if you've seen that, then you'll know what that's all about. It was kind of like a motif to uh, drag on from the last assessment. And I hope they kind of find that kind of cool. So in the last submission as well, I mentioned that there were three key words and the first one was memorability. That's also why this project is called Remember because it's focusing on the campfire, bringing people together to have a remembered experience. And so memorability is my first keyword. Transparency is the next one. That's why the trees are allowed to stick through the building. That's why we've got the grid shell structure. That's why um, there's a transparent blanket over the top of it. And the third keyword was unity because it's this idea of the fireplace being this hearth of the project and to bring people together to unite and and share their ideas and share their stories around the campfire. So I have some accommodation inspiration here. Uh, we're really just looking at that transparent fire um, for the accommodation. The showers and the accommodation aren't actually a part of the final documentation. They were just to have a general understanding of how they sit around the canopy. So I might just fly through this stuff. This is kind of my quick sketch designs for the accommodation. And they're kind of just these places of rest where you can uh, look into the nature and um, it's kind of pointing towards the forest and all that. Again, I kind of walked through a bit more in the first submission about this and that's why I don't focus on it too much here. Uh, the showers are just this idea of you've got this shower that revolves around the trees in the forest. Um, so you walk away from the accommodation and you go to this private shower space in the forest and you've got showers in the trees where you can have a private shower amongst all the trees in the forest, which is um, a pretty cool idea, if I may say so myself. For the site analysis, this was pretty boring stuff. We just wanted to mention that we had to pick a site for the project. And so I decided to have it in the middle. And so first of all, I decided to outline it with this blue dash line and shade showing where we can actually have the design. The red bits show where existing buildings are already. So um, we cannot design there. So the green spaces are also indicating the best spaces where we could allocate the site. And then here's just a bit more site analysis, a bit more site analysis. This is me deciding that this central bit was probably best because uh, the ground further down here is slopes down to this side. So all the water will be running down there. There's a good chance it's gonna be flooding. So to have it more towards the center of the site next to this creek that runs through here as well would be quite a nice spot. It's also a bit more private as well because you've got public camping grounds here to have it a bit more uh, further away than having it just situated next to the public camping grounds. Again, this is just showing how um, the accommodation is going to be on the higher side rather than the lower side. And just some real rough sketches showing how these accommodations and the hat, the canopy is going to be sitting around the central fire. This illustration here is from the first submission showing how you can actually access the site. That's always important to know. And then we've got some concept inspiration as well. It really is this idea of having kind of like a central fire with a like a central chute that goes up. And this was the idea of my um, accentuation of the timber lades that kind of spiral around the fireplace. And then to have this kind of like tent blanket thing that covers over and protects it. Uh, just something thin like a fabric or something like that. And then here is that idea of the twisting towers or the spirals that go around the fireplace and then um, some other general inspiration. This project here was actually one of my key um, ideas behind it. This was the idea of having these curved timber or in this sense just wood um, logs just curving and then spanning across a long way with a blanket over the top of it. Now we move into the concept development. This was me playing around with some things in Rhino. Um, this is all pretty, pretty boring stuff. Just this idea of the cave like structure just coming up and curving around. And then here I'm talking about how I would actually kind of be designing this. So um, how there would be three different parts. You've got the spiral bit at the start. You've got another one that connects to the ground and then this cave structure. Also showing the heights and stuff because that's all very important and how the landscaping is actually coming off of the roof of this project and the trees stick through it as well. This was some very early development I did just showing the general idea of the structure and you can see how my design has progressed over the weeks of this semester. Here we've got the tensile timber waffle structure that allows the environment to stick through it. Again, just something very, very rough and something quick. 
And then this was my model from the first assignment where I'm showing how this timber structure and these lathes would actually be built. And then we've got some further development trying to like dig down into how the spaces are actually going to be used and how you've got these suspended overhead storages and then uh, the kitchen space, how that's um, kind of laid out. And I actually decided to change up my concept quite a bit. Um, so I decided to have a more closed structure after the first assignment. Um, this is where we started to see stuff that wasn't from the first assignment. So I decided to make a quick model showing how this um, this kind of grid shell structure is going to be laid out. This was before I did any designing in, on the computer or on sketches. I just decided to make some quick models. So I wanted more environmental control, more shelter and more shade. And then um, we did some quick sketches showing how this is going to be kind of laid out. And then we brought it into Rhino and just did some quick working out. And I had this very commercial balcony at the start, which I decided to get rid of. And then in the background there, you can see how the grid shells uh, kind of sitting on top of this blanket that um, it's just very thin fabric. Again, this is just working out kind of the, the new kitchen space and how these, <laughs> this seating all works. And towards the middle of the second project, I did a quick draft documentation set just showing where everything would be laid out and uh, where the details would be and where the section cuts would be as well, which I thought was pretty helpful because I could show that to my tutorer and he could give me advice on, nah, you'd be better of cutting through the section um, a bit closer or uh, maybe doing a different detail because that doesn't really show what you need to show. And then we had some construction inspiration because that's what um, we kind of needed to understand, the construction behind it. This detail here was actually pretty key um, as for the inspiration behind my construction, which you'll start to see soon uh, in the documentation set. So. Moving on, we did some quick drawings showing the construction ideas. And then this was my quick one to two model um, using timber in real life. So this is uh, half of the size of what it would be in real life. And then I did a quick uh, Rhino model as well. And then we get into the actual detailing behind um, how some of these timber lathes are connected to the ground. Um, that's really what all that's showing. Talking about the ground conditions. Now you've got this continuous concrete strip beam that goes around the perimeter of the building. And then you've got a concrete slab towards the middle there whereas the rest of it is all grass and the natural ground. Then you start looking at the typical connection in an isometric view and that's this idea of the detail where you've got this steel plate that is connected to the bottom side of it and it connects these two timber pieces together. Again, just some more typical details. That's the end of my folio. So that really was just something quick um, that the tutors can flick through and have a look and refer to. It wasn't the main um, idea behind the project. The main idea was actually what's coming next, which is the documentation set. So let's go ahead and open up the documentation set. This is the first page. You've just got my little animation there with the sounds in the background, just to give it that motif feel like remember. And so the first page of my documentation set is the location plan at 1 to 10,000 scale. Uh, this is just showing the general location of the site. Um, so it's showing the suburbs that are nearby and it's also showing the drawing schedule. So the drawing schedule is just a list that shows the drawings in the documentation set and it also shows the sheet numbers so you can know what to expect while scrolling through this. Now it's important you always have a title block in your documentation sets. Mine just has my name, the subject, and then um, the legend's gonna be here as well as some other project details down below. The next drawing is the site plan at one to 500. The site plan is definitely showing different information than the location plan. It's much more zoomed in and it's showing kind of the nearby conditions. It's showing the set out point. So how far off an existing structure uh, do you have to walk to get this building set up? So that's information for the construction people, the builders. It's showing paths and their, their width. So it's showing there's a gravel path that's leading to the actual hat and it goes around to the side as well. The site plan is also showing the contours and their heights. So these heights here are meaning that this point or this line here, this contour line is 422 meters above sea level. And then each line is at a progression of two meters. So each line is then two meters apart from the next one. Moving on, we've got the roof plan. So this is zooming in even more to one to 100. The whole idea of a documentation set, um, the key thing I guess is to not replay information, not to overcrowd things, not to make things confusing. And so where you want to show as much information as you can, you don't want to repeat things and you want to make it clear, concise and complete. So the roof plan is only showing kind of the roof conditions and where the water runs and then how the stormwater is collected. As I didn't really have any gutters or any kind of water collection parts that can be seen in the roof plan, uh, there's not a whole lot on this 
drawing. Whereas if you've got a typical residential building, you'd be showing kind of the roof slopes and where the gutters are, where the rain heads are, where the downpipes are and all this kind of stuff. So then we move on to the ground floor plan, which is a slice at 1200 mils. And here we're starting to show dimensions. We're starting to show what those ground conditions are, how the kitchen's got this timber run. So you can see that uh, that's T1, which is a 18 millimeter eco deck plus. And then you can see NG is the natural ground. So it's to be retained and preserved. And the fire pit has a stone ground there as well. So the key point of the ground floor plan is to show the different section cuts um, and so as you can see as you click on one of those section cuts It will actually take you to that drawing which is really cool um, about Revit if I click to see this detail here It will take me to that detail. So a challenge I had with the ground floor plan was that I couldn't really show all the continuous spans of the timber lathes going over um, like showing the overhead elements of the roof because it would just cluster it up as you'll see kind of in the next drawing so this is a zoomed in floor plan of the kitchen and as you can see, I've started to show those timber lathes going over in a really light, fine, uh, like half tone color. And then I'm just showing how this space is actually laid out. Again, what kind of the more specific dimensions are to actually build this thing. Then we start to move into some elevations. They don't show a whole lot of construction information. They're more just showing the materiality and then some general heights just for referencing. So you can see where the ground floor is, where that finished floor level for the kitchen is, and then the roof as well. And because the elevations aren't actually cutting through anything, yeah, you're really not showing any construction data. You're kind of just showing the finishes on the materials. Moving on, we've got some more elevations. We're not cutting through anything, so there's not a whole lot of information here. But then as we move through to the sections, that's when we start to cut through some things. And we start to show kind of how some things are getting constructed. If we were to zoom in here, you can see that you've got some thicker lines on the things that are cut through. So the ground line's the thickest and then the things that are getting cut through are also the second thickest. And you're showing the crosses through the timber to show where it's been sawn off. And you're also starting to show the footings and the slabs underneath the ground, everything that's being cut through. So then moving on, we've got section B here, just showing a cut from the north to the south. And we can see this little detail call out here. So if we go to this page here, which is the next page, A109, we can see that it's a zoomed in detail call out of um, the wall section and now we can start to see how these timber lathes are connected to the ground we can see where that strip uh, strip beam footing is and we can see all the notes and we're really starting to get a lot deeper into the construction of how this is actually built i've got a little isometric detail here which is showing that connection of the lathes to the ground in the fireplace and as you can see this is very different to a concept sketch design uh, set because a sketch design shows kind of how the space is used for the client whereas the documentation set shows how it's to be built. The next page then shows some typical details of how those timber lathes are connected. And you can see that this um, footing has got a horizontal timber lathe that's connected to the ground by these bolts. And then that's screwed into the um, kind of like more vertical timber lathes. And these are connected by a steel cleat, which um, kind of compresses the two. So you'll be able to see that in this drawing here, which shows that detail of how these two timber lathes are uh, sandwiched together by these galvanized steel plates and then bolted through to make sure they're still secure. And you can see how this strip beam just goes around the entire perimeter. In between the two timber lathes, you've got this eight millimeter monacrylic blanket that's treated with flame seal. And so that makes it water and fire retardant, which just means it's this thin material that's um, fireproof, waterproof, and it's gonna keep the rain out. It's not gonna catch a light and it really does the job that I, I need it to do. So the last page of the documentation set is this section details page, and that's showing how the trees sticking through the building, how these um, the blanket opens up and it falls down to create a little drip groove where the water can uh, drip down and, and water the tree. It's showing this connection um, of the timber lathe to the um, in, in the kitchen space and how that connects to the timber floor. And so that's the end of my project, guys. Um, I will let you know what grade I get. I will share with you my reaction to that and I hope you enjoyed just looking at some of my work. I don't really know if this is something you guys enjoyed. If it is, let me know. If it's not, <laughs> let me know and I won't do it again. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to check out one of the other videos, you can do uh, to the side here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do with that button down below. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next episode.